Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's vlog where I will be reading some fantasy romances off Kindle Unlimited. I had planned to do like my regular five books uh, but life kind of got in the way so I end up reading Guild. This is the first book in the Plated Prisoner series. It is an extremely popular book. I end up reading A Song of the Marked which is something that I heard uh, vaguely through the grapevine about. I hadn't heard too much about it itself, but it was kind of a popular fantasy romance. And then lastly, I read City of Gods and Monsters, which uh, is the longest and the most intimidating of all of them. Let's get into the vlog portion of the video and make sure you leave your recs for some more fantasy romance like these down in the comments. Hi friends, I apologize for the lighting. I don't know if it's terrible or not. Can't really tell, uh, probably is. I am 25% of the way through Guild um, and I'm enjoying it so much that I just like wanted to continue and I didn't even want to update you and yesterday I got 25% in and then I had to help my mom. Um, she recently moved to the area like 15 minutes down the road which is the closest we've lived together since we lived. This is the closest we've lived to each other since we lived together so that's very exciting. If you don't know my mom is like my best friend. Um, so we are very close and it's exciting to have her back living near me where it's not like two hours for me to get to her house. Um, and then we did a lot of moving and I broke out like in hives I guess uh, and I'm all bruised and stuff and I don't really know what it is. So I am also I don't know what this is. Uh, I don't know if that's like a hive or my lip is just really chapped. It doesn't hurt, um, but anyways, 25% of the way through Guild, and I'm really enjoying this. So you probably are familiar with the story, but it's basically about this girl who was saved by Midas when she was young. I think she was like 10 or something like that, and she is now his special saddle, is what they're called. I guess uh, a sex slave, I guess, because she doesn't really have any um, say in it. He's now a king. And there's like these four or five different kingdoms broken up in this in this world or whatever. He married the princess of the place that he's now the king of. And because she didn't have any power, like the people in her royal line, he became kind of the ruler because he has power. He's Midas. She is like his plated prisoner is what she calls herself. She's all gold and she lives in a cage. And in the beginning of this book... Um, we open the book with her watching him uh, being involved in an orgy with his other concubines or whatever the hell they're called, other saddles. She is watching him and we get the idea that she is in love with him. And then another king comes to the kingdom and basically he's like she, he's, the other king is like obsessed with her and he really wants a night with her and so he proposes a night with her and he'll give Midas whatever he wants and Midas says you have to go you have to give me your army so I can launch this attack against another kingdom the attack is against this king that's like really feared I guess he's like the king of death or something like they all have different powers and he can like blight his town and use that as a fear against like his people to make them subservient to him and so they're gonna attack because he's been encroaching but I think it's more of a power play on Midas's part. The other king agrees so she has to spend one night with this other king and um, they will go to war or whatever and I don't quite know where it goes from there. I know at some point she ends up becoming the like full time of another person. I don't know if she's going back to his kingdom with him and that's how that's gonna go. I don't really know. It's a it's an interesting premise. She's literally been trapped in this cage and uh, she has a very interesting relationship with Midas. Like obviously she's a prisoner but she's in love with him and she feels like he loves her and everybody else in the story is like you're really just like a, pr a trophy for him um he doesn't really love you and she's convinced that he does so it's an interesting dynamic i'm interested to see like she despite him sell essentially selling her to someone else for a night against her will she still loves him so 
we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it, uh, and hopefully I don't become so obsessed that I just want to read it back to back to back. So I will update you again at the 50%, and hopefully it's just as good. Okay, friends. So. Uh, I have finished a video, a book for this video, uh, since we last spoke, and I'm like 80% of the way through another one. This video did not go at all how I planned it to go. Uh, I had a very clear TBR that I wanted to read, and um, just life got in the way. So, I last time I spoke to you, I think I told you that I was in, I was reading Guild, and I did end up finishing it. Uh, I gave it four out of five stars. This might be kind of a generous rating, but the great thing about reading, it's very situational. <laughs> so I probably just picked this up and read it at the perfect time. It was a quick read. It was something that I was able to get through, um, despite the things that I was go that were going on, and it was an enjoyable read. Just again, nothing really revolutionary happened uh, and that's probably what I'm gonna say about the other book that I'm currently through and probably going to give five stars. I'm a huge fantasy romance reader that's definitely a genre of romance, a subgenre of romance that I am looking to get more into and this was kind of my dipping my toes in and I'm definitely going to continue because I've always been a fantasy reader uh, and I was excited to dive more into some fantasy romance once I had some like a, a, a good list of, of books uh, like I said I don't know how many books are going to be in this video before I decide to wrap it up so I ended up finishing Guild uh, this was the story of a woman who was a saddle a pleasure pony to King Midas who ruled one of the who rules one of the like, kingdoms in this world uh, and in the beginning of the story another king comes and Midas sells her for, to the other king for a night um, to secure the other king's army to attack another kingdom. But this doesn't go well for the other king. Midas uh, rescued her when she was 10. We very much get the idea that he like groomed her uh, and he touched her and made her gold but obviously like she's living and she lives in a cage on the top level of his castle and she only interacts with him and like some guards and stuff and so he ends up turning against the king that he made the deal with and he takes over that king's kingdom and he calls for her to come to that kingdom uh to you know be with him while he's there uh ruling and she ends up getting kidnapped by some like pirates i guess uh it's it's like a desert but they're on a ship and then she ends up getting taken from there by one of the kings of the the king that might have said he was attacking but wasn't really attacking um i enjoyed this like i said it was a quick read it was addicting uh i really enjoyed myself reading it it wasn't anything spectacular the author was trying to have a good mix of like character development while also pushing the plot along and i think neither of them was too successful uh, i did get a good grasp on who the heroine was and her complex relationship with Midas and all of that. Uh, I definitely will be continuing. I'm interested to see where the series goes. I'm assuming her eventual romance is with this other king that has just kidnapped her. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting... We'll see how that goes because we haven't even met him at this point uh, in the first book. There is no romance really in this one uh, unless you consider the thing with Midas a romance which like it's not. Uh, it's sex slavery. So I am... 80% of the way through The Song of the Marked and I'm very much enjoying this. Um, I did decide to read some Goodreads reviews. I definitely understand where people are coming from when they say like it's not super well developed and they romance starts off strong and doesn't really end that strong but I'm enjoying it. So we open the story with Kaz who is sort of a bounty hunter of sorts and she is she has stumbled upon this area called the Oblivion and it seems to be this like hub of dark magic and she ends up running into the peacekeepers who are the king's uh, like guards. They um, basically do his bidding and in this world there is this fading sickness that has killed a bunch of people and um, the heroine got the fading sickness and she's the only one as far as we know that has lived she's lived like 14 years since she got it 
and she is working with this band of mercenaries who she has met along her travels and she is taking care of a, her adopt like her adopted mother her adoptive mother um and who also has the fading sickness and is slowly dying her mother has like lived longer than most people live but she runs into the peacekeepers she gets into a fight with them and she ends up getting away um and she is back at a tavern and she's discussing um what they saw at this like oblivion with her friends and they bet her that she will not steal this like piece of jewelry like a like a cuff or something off of this guy who seems to be like interested in her so she pretends to be a sex worker she goes up to his room she steals from him and she gets away and then she ends up running into him again when she is trying to spy meds for her adopted mother's illness of uh, illegal drugs that seem to come from the place it's called the in-between and in this world there's different types of magic that comes from the gods that created the world there's essentially three gods and then there's like middle god like there's three high gods and like a middle god and then a low god and people have branches of magic based off of what god they are so like fire air stuff like that um flower or this plant that is said to help the fading sickness or it has helped her mother at least, comes from an in-between between the part of the kingdom where the fading sickness started and another kingdom where the fading sickness has not happened yet. So it's very much divided into different kingdoms and her kingdom has experienced the fading sickness but no others have. Um, and it's all kind of very hastily explained and or not well explained. She ends up starting to work for the king. His uh, father and like their bloodline does not have like the best history. They have been known to um, make people with the fading sickness like just disappear and they tend to kill people that have magic. Um, and so there is just a lot of sketchiness going on with the king and she ends up getting captured by the dude that she was like seducing in the inn and all that kind of stuff and she has a romance with him and she starts working with the king but the soldier guy i can't remember what he's called uh his name is a lander but i can't remember like what his title is but a lander basically doesn't trust the king and he has death magic and he's like the king's right hand but he doesn't trust him and so he's like working behind the scenes but we haven't quite been told what behind the scenes he's doing um and it's just good like it just it while it's not well explained or well particularly well done in the way of world building and like explaining things i am enjoying it it is fast paced uh and there's always something happening i'm enjoying the heroine herself she's very much um it, it's an interesting she's an interesting character because she has anxiety which i feel like is represented in a way that most people could understand but also she it manifests in an interesting way um very much like a i'm fearless because of my anxiety if that makes sense like she uses the anxiety to her advantage and she's just you know feisty and your stereotypical like fantasy romance heroine the romance itself isn't the best uh i enjoy the hero i think he's an interesting character i'm i'm excited to see where his backstory and all that goes i wish we had his pov uh but their romance is a little odd like there's it's there's a lot of like starts and stops um where the plot will take over and then we'll have like heavy romance chapters and heavy plot chapters missing a little of like that blend of the two together but like i said i'm 80 percent to the way through it could be a five star could be a four star i can't see it being any lower than a four star uh, just because I've I've been I've been really enjoying it. Um, so I think the last thing that I will probably read for this video um, is going to be City of Gods and Monsters, which I briefly started, but it's like over 800 pages, so it's going to be quite a bit uh, before I f finish that one. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to come back to you again when I have finished the Song of the Marked uh, with all of my feelings, and then we will move on to the next one. Okay, friends, so I finished A Song of the Marked, The Song of the Marked, A Song of the Marked, whichever one it is, and I did end up giving it four stars. If I remove myself a little bit more from the reading experience, it's probably more of like a three bordering four, uh, but I really did enjoy it. It When I read it, it was just like I read it at the perfect time. It was fast-paced. 
uh, and it was kind of exactly what I wanted from dipping my for dipping my toes into like a fantasy romance um, and if you have more recommendations like this one I I would I would like them um, I think that despite the romance being a little off and the twist at the end being something that I could have guessed if I had put more than two brain cells into it. it delivered exactly what I wanted it to and I'm hoping that with the books to come there will be a little bit more development. 16% of the way through City of Gods and Monsters which is 120 pages in and this one I'm not enjoying as much. Um, so this is basically about Lauren. Lauren? Lauren. Whatever. And she lives in this, like, it's an urban fantasy setting. In this city, all creatures co coexist. So vampires, uh, werewolves. I haven't seen, like, a full extent of the the, the roster of uh, creatures that there are. Um, but in the beginning of the book, she's going to a club with her friends. They end up leaving the club. We get the idea that you're not supposed to traverse the city at night because there are some, like, demon-like monsters that will attack you. And on the way back to their apartment, they get, um attacked by this group of mm, people. I don't know exactly what they're like, how to pronounce what they are, but they seem to be like bounty hunters. They can read auras. They might have some sort of like demon affiliation with them. And they end up kidnapping her friend because they want to kidnap her, but they can't because the authorities show up. And so now her friend has been kidnapped. She is teaming up with this guy named Darian who has been hired to kidnap her and he is offering to protect her. We don't really know why, I don't think he really even knows why, um, but she is now staying with the Seven Devils, which is like his pack of these demon-like bounty hunters that are like the best of the best. All we really know about this world is like, you're separated into factions, she goes to like some sort of paranormal school, she thinks that she's human, but I'm sure we're gonna find out differently, and because it's so long, it's 748 pages, the ebook version is, there's not a whole lot here at this 10% or 15% mark, but I feel like there should be. Like, I feel like I should have some sort of, of emotional investment in it, but I'm sort of just reading it to read it. Uh, it's not a bad experience by any means, and unlike 90% of the Goodreads reviews who think that Miss Sarah Jeanette created urban fantasy and or for fantasy romance in general, I don't think that this is a Crescent City ripoff. I'm going to get back into it. I'll probably update you like 50% of the way through. Um, I'm trying to like read this book because like I want to finish it. I didn't get the five books for this video that I wanted to get done and I want to see like if I like it. I, I, I am in this fantasy romance um, mood and I want to find some good ones that I can continue series and you know explore more of so I will update you again at the 50% mark and hopefully I have better things to report to you. Okay so bad news first I ended up DNFing City of Gods and Monsters at 30 like 2% I just like could not do it there was nothing there like I tried really hard I really 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 wanted to read it like I would go out of my way to read it like I would be like okay well I need to pick up this video this book for this video and then I wouldn't I would go back to City of Gods and Monsters to read it because I wanted to enjoy it so bad and I think I just want to be like I'm in a fantasy mood so I want to read some fantasies um but there's just nothing here the whole plot of the story is that she her best friend has been kidnapped and she enlists the help of these death seers or dark seers or something like that people that can read auras and commune with the dead and all this other shit um she enlists the help of a pack of one of them and that's the hero darian and he's trying to get her friend back and they're trying to figure out who's trying to hunt her down and i read a decent chunk of this like it's it's over 750 pages and I read 32% and nothing was happening. So I read over 200 pages and nothing was happening. The romance wasn't progressing in a believable way. The plot was doing absolutely nothing. The world building made no sense. I couldn't explain to you anything about the magic system. All I know is like there's some sort of illness if you use too much magic but it doesn't seem to affect everybody. There's like werewolves and vampires and there's mages but they have to use staves and it's just like the world is not well explained at all and there's no cohesion to anything. So 
I'm going to try to read one more fantasy romance for this video uh, and then hopefully that will quench my fantasy romance desire. I think I'm going to try to read Untainted. Um, this is about Vera who's um, wielding a blade and pretending to be human. Raised in the heart of the Matherin Empire, spent most of her life forced to hide away. She confronts a strange male she spies tailing the crown prince. He claims she possesses a power his people vitally need, and he refuses to leave without her. So, I am hoping that this one does the trick. Please, please, please leave me some urban fantasy recommendations down below. I think that's what I'm craving, and I just wished that City of Gods and Monsters was it, because it just, it, it just was not it. So, that is uh, the update. I will come back when I have gotten some of the way in through tainted, untainted, and I have some thoughts. So, okay. Okay, friends, so I have finished the last book for this video. I ended up finishing untainted. Now, I said that I was going to update you as I went, but quite frankly, this book is very, was pr pretty short, and there wasn't a whole lot going on that I needed to talk to you about. Uh, so this is about Vera, who is an orphan who was left on the doorstep of an, like the king's armorer. And when she is 20-ish, um, the prince, the crown prince shows up and takes her and her uh, orphan father or whatever with him uh, to investigate some cities. It's pretty unclear like what the actual traveling is for, like what they're, what they're, what the intention behind the traveling is for. Um, but it then ends up with her meeting this guy who's like a fae or alluded to a fae uh, and he discovers that she has a tie to someone in his past. He kidnaps her and they go on an adventure to like discover who she really is. Like I said it's pretty short it's only like 100 or 280 pages ish and there really isn't there there really isn't a whole lot to grab onto the heroine herself felt very very immature which just felt weird given that we we're supposed to believe that she was this like strong badass uh heroine who also was like supposed to be this fated mate to this fae. The hero himself felt very flat. The world building wasn't very well executed. I get that she was naive and the truth of like the kingdom and all of that was hidden from her, but it wasn't well executed in any regard. The magic didn't really make much sense. How she got there didn't make sense. It just was very flat altogether uh was the large issue and so i didn't really have anything to say I ended up giving it three stars you can kind of tell by the way that i'm talking because it's just very average i i might eventually continue the series if i'm just like really craving a fantasy romance and i have no other options uh but it was just very average so that is the last ku fantasy romance i'm going to read for this video let me know recommendations down in the comments i would love to read some more i'm still craving a good fantasy if you don't have anything to say leave a fairy of some sort and uh, if you're looking for more content from me, you can check out my Instagram or my podcast Instagram. You can also check out my podcast on all your favorite streaming platforms. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next one.